What's up, ballers? Welcome to another video where we try to change the direction of a floundering team. If we take a look at the condensed season standing so far, one loser definitely stands out, and it is the Pittsburgh Pirates. I mean, look at these standings, but how did they get here? Well, I think urinating tree says it best. If I were to go over every single buttfuck of a move made by shitty management and every goddamn operation shutdown made by the players, this video would probably be 30 minutes long. So instead, we'll just blame this guy, Neil Huntington, who has now been fired. This guy left us with nothing. I mean, how many of these names do you even recognize? Like one or two, right? Hell, one of my pitchers is suspended for 80 games. To add to this challenge, it's Pittsburgh, one of the smallest market teams, so the finances will be a burden. Let's see how long it takes to win a World Series. I expect it's going to be a while. To start off here, the manager options and team strategy that I used for this run. For more of an idea on my methods, go check out some of my other videos. Here the before and after personnel hires. Some of the staff is brand new, so I'm going to wait before firing absolutely everyone. One special thing about this series is it uses the newest roster update by Out of the Park with the adjusted 60 game schedule. So I immediately go and check on our old friend Felipe Vasquez. After the endless minutes of trolling on Twitch and more than enough material for its own video, Out of the Park is finally retired Felipe Vasquez. While you're at it, can you take out the fucking pedophile? And I cannot wait to start my pirate's journey. Oh my god! Oh my god! Hey, do you mind if I borrow your toenail clippers? I can't find mine. Did you really just come in here during my Felipe Vasquez victory moment to ask about toenail clippers? Yes. Get the fuck out! Unfucking believable! By accepting the job, we are bestowed owner goals from Bob Nutting, the penny pincher. The goal is to basically not completely suck. Although we're starting right off at the beginning of a season, there are still some free agents left. I attempt to sign Brandon Morrow to a one-year deal worth $1.5 million, but he refused. I guess I'm gonna have to make some trades. First trade is with the Diamondbacks and in Chris Stratton, Nick Birdie, and JT Brubaker for Robbie Ray retaining 5%, Josh Green, and three minor leaguers. I'm going to liquidate what I can for minor leaguers, and this this trade got me three decent ones, including Alec Thomas. This guy has amazing contact potential and could very well be a star outfielder. Next trade is with the Dodgers sending Chad Cool, Colin Moran, and Jacob Stalling for American hero Joe Kelly, top catching prospect, Kiebert Ruiz, and a minor leaguer. And if you have a problem with me calling Joe Kelly an American hero, well, this is what I think. Last trade of the offseason is with the Blue Jays, who send Shun Yamaguchi and another top prospect, Jordan Groshans, for Eric Gonzalez, Jose Osuna, and a minor leaguer. And taking a look at Groshans, he's got decent overall potential and think he'll be pretty decent once he's all grown up. After all the transactions are made to clean up the roster, here are the pitching assignments and lineup that I'm left with. Amazingly, we have the draft to attend to. We could, in theory, import the results of this year's draft, but why not try for my own? I do have the number seven pick, and with that pick, I draft drafted Emerson Hancock, but also got some other players who were drafted this year, so I might have a decent haul despite my second rounder not signing because I couldn't afford him. We make it to opening day, and as is the usual tradition, I play the game, and this is the lineup that I went with. Not a great time in the ballpark for us today. We do see a triple in the top of the second by Cabrian Hayes, but our pitching proved ineffective, and we go down to the Cardinals 6-4. I expect most of our games will be like this. Shortly after, I made a trade with the White Sox, hitting Kevin Newman for Dan. Danny Mendick? <laughs> Mendick. And another top prospect in Nick Madrigal. Taking a look at his stats, he has great contact, avoids strikeouts, and great defense. Our season is going to suck, but we've got some pretty decent players in the pipeline now. To make this trade work, I demote Kevin Kramer. This is my new lineup. Edgar Martinez is no longer injured, but is still suspended. I think about sending him to rehab, but then remember his suspensions have to be at a major league level this season due to the minors not playing. And out of the park can't make a proper restricted list. So I have no choice but to DFA him. Getting fucked in the ass by the game engine once again. We make it to August with already almost as many wins as the real Pirates have at the time of this video's creation with a 3 and 4 record, a 429 win percentage, 4th in a division. Immediate improvement is a good thing, I guess. These are my pitching stats. 
as well as my batting stats. I make no roster moves at this time because it's only been seven games. Shortly after, Joe Musgrove is out for three months or the season. At the same time, JT Riddle is out for four months, again, the season. I guess it doesn't really matter at this point. I call up Cody Bolton and Steven Alamaze to the Major League roster. These are my new pitching assignments, as well as my lineup. We reach what the game refers to as roster expansion, even though the roster is shrinking from 30 to 28. But what gets me is the game refers to this date as, quote, one of the most looked forward to. They didn't even get the fucking number of players right in the email. What a fucking shit show. I'm beginning to wonder if you understand anything. I demote Mitch Keller and Steven Alamaze as a result of the, quote, roster expansion. These are my new pitching assignments, as well as my lineup. And Brian Reynolds is suspended. Lovely. We make it to some more roster shrinkage as we now are only allowed to have 26 players, something that has been removed in real life, by the way. However, this time there's no ceremonial buildup to tell me about it, instead simply saying the roster is now 26 players. I have a feeling the coding was done by two different people, which, here's a good life tip. If using a father-son business, always ask for the father. In preparation for the roster shrinkage, I demote Luke Mail, Denny Mendick, <laughs> and James Marvel while calling up Kiebert Ruiz. These are my new pitching assignments, as well as my lineup. Mid-season goals time and Bob Nutting has mixed feelings about my performance. Eat shit, Bob! Last trade of the season is with the Cubs, sending Shun Yamaguchi, Jared Dyson, and a minor leaguer for Tyler Chatwood and Jack Patterson. Chatwood is just a rental to make it through the season, but I wanted Patterson for a bit. To make this trade work, I demote Bull Solcer and call up Jared Oliva. These are my new pitching assignments, as well as my lineup. As we reach the end of the month, Cabrian Hayes is named Rookie of the Month, which in all likelihood will mean that he'll be Rookie of the Year, and we want that. We make it to September somehow still in the playoff race with a 17 and 18 record, a 486 win percentage, third in the division. If we can actually pull together, we might end up in the playoffs, but that's probably not gonna happen. These are my pitching stats, as well as my batting stats. I make no roster moves at this time. Taking a look at one of my favorite players to this point, Cole Tucker, he's doing rather well with a 414 batting average, 1.099 OPS, despite having no home runs and has played in 29 games. This guy could feasibly make his way into the record books. As per the usual tradition, I play the game after the trade deadline and here's the lineup that I went with. The game did not start off great, giving up four runs in the top of the first inning. However, we actually managed to tie it back up in the next half inning, a good bit of which came from Kiebert Ruiz's two-run home run, and we eventually break away to beat the Cubs 8-5. to And with that win, we are at 500 with the most lax playoff seating ever. We might do this. We need everything to go right, but we could in theory find ourselves a wildcard berth. And of course, Josh Beller, most productive hitter, gets coronavirus. Okay, it's just a fever, but that four days could make or break us. And Cody Bolton is suspended. What is wrong with you, you colossal fucking creep? We make it to the end of the season, but we more or less have fallen apart, finishing up with a 27 and 33 record, a 450 win percentage, fourth in the division. Not a happy ending, but a predictable one nevertheless. These are my pitching stats to end the season, as well as my batting stats. Taking a look at Josh Bell, he did pretty well with the 317 batting average and 968 OPS was worth 1.8 wins above replacement, which doesn't sound like a lot, but keep in mind the abbreviated season. One area of improvement was our player development. We managed to go from terrible to the second best system in the league. Quite proud of that and it fulfills two of my owner goals as well. I mean, look at all these prospects. As far as who won the World Series, the Twins beat the Dodgers in seven. LA still can't win a World Series. To end the season, I execute the remainder of Chris Archer's contract. The owner is ecstatic with my performance, but wants more from me. I swear I'm not blowing the guy. But then he says he just doesn't want the team to suck. I don't get it, Bob. The main issue is that my market size has shrunk to tiny, which will adversely affect my payroll, making my search for a World Series that much harder. Well, normally I'd end the episode here, but a 60-game season doesn't seem sufficient to me, so you're getting two this time. I think you should be grateful. I think you should be down on your fucking knees. 
to start the 2021 season here are the before and after personnel hires. I would rather just move on, but no, someone will bitch if I don't include this. For salary arbitrations, I give contracts near the estimates with some notable exceptions. Michael Felice gets $5 million over two years. Need all of the cheap players I can get, which is why I also gave an extension to Adam Frazier who gets $7 million over two years. I need him to be as versatile as a drunk twink during Pride. I decide to trade away so many players. The first deals made with the national singing Edgar Santana, Luke Mayle, and Brian Reynolds for Trace Barrera, two minor leaguers, and Cash. I like the minor leaguers, but Barrera is actually a really well-ranked catcher. I think between him and Ruiz, our catching platoon will be set for years. Next trade is with the Astros, who send Taylor Jones, Forrest Whitley, Chris Davinsky, Jose Urquidy, and $10 million for Andrew Susak, Socrates Brito, Mitch Keller, and a minor leaguer. Keller wasn't doing great for me and thought Jones and Urquidy might be a better bargain. Last trade for now is with the Angels sending Trevor Williams, Danny Mendick. <laughs> Sad chuckle. I'm getting rid of him. And two minor leaguers for Griffin Canning, two minor leaguers in cash. Canning is a big question mark, but it's a risk I'm willing to take because we already suck. What's to lose, for God's sake? I make a qualifying offer to Robbie Ray, which is stupid, who then rejects the QO, which is even more stupid, and you'll see why shortly. To prepare for the Rule 5 draft, I DFA Stephen Alamaze, Kevin Kramer, and Bo Solser while adding Dalton Varsho, Philip Evans, Jason Martin, and Jeff Hartlieb to the 40-man roster. Simming along, we discover that Cabrian Hayes was named Rookie of the Year, as I predicted, and Chris Archer received the Great Bat Award at Pitcher. Our best hitter was a pitcher, huh? Babe took a vicious swing at the third pitch ball, and the bat connected with a crash that was audible in all parts of the span. I then decided to trade away Chris Archer, newly acquired Forrest Whitley, as well as two minor leaguers for Dansby Swanson, Tuki Toussaint, Ian Anderson, and a minor leaguer. Taking a look at Ian Anderson's stats, he's got the potential to be middle rotation, maybe even an ace. I've seen him develop in other runs quite nicely, so I'm confident he will do well with us. We reached the free agency period, and here are some of the available talent we would love to sign, but cannot afford. We're trading, I guess. I make a trade with the Brewers, sending Gregory Polanco for Avisail Garcia, retaining 25% and a minor leaguer. This is just an attempt to shed some payroll. I make yet another trade, this time with the Red Sox, who send Jairo Munoz, retaining 90% and two minor leaguers for JT Riddle and Jared Oliva. Again, trying to shed some payroll. Rule 5 draft time, and this is really my only chance until now to add some fresh faces to the organization other than through trade. I make three picks, including center fielder Josh Lowe, pitcher Drew Carlton, and right fielder DJ Peters. If even one of these guys lasts through the season, I will call it a win. Shortly after, we get an email from old Robbie Nugget Butter saying he's increased our payroll. Well, let's go sign some free agents. And you know the first one I signed? Robbie Ray to a $4 million deal for one year. He could have had $15 million. I could have had to have paid $15 million. I'm just about to lose my mind. The other signing I make is with Angleton Simmons, who agrees to $26 million over three years. People have been perplexed about me signing him in other runs, but he's a decent player that doesn't require a lot of cash on my part. I make a trade with the Angels, sending Dansby Swanson and Joe Kelly, retaining 45% for Hansel Robles, retaining 15%. Both of us retaining some portion of salary seems stupid, but with the Pirates, you got a nickel and dime. We make it to spring training and no injuries. What a pleasant surprise. We make it to opening day and after the usual demotions, here are the pitching assignments and lineup that I went with. As per the usual tradition, I play the opening day game and here is the lineup that I went with. This was a close one. Adam Frazier hits this home run in the bottom of the ninth to give us a glimmer of hope, but it wasn't enough as we go down to the Rays 4-3. Again, probably going to be a lot of this. I make a trade with the Padres, sending Guillermo Heredia and Jairo Munoz for Roman Quinn, retaining 95% and a minor leaguer. Again, shaving payroll. To make this trade work, I call up Taylor Jones. This is my new lineup. Angleton Simmons is out for two to three weeks. Not a great investment so far. And I call up Philip Evans to replace him. This is my new lineup. Robbie Ray is out for eight weeks. Imagine if I'd paid him $15 million. I'd be super fucking pissed off right now. I call up Tucker Davidson in his place. These are my new pitching assignments. Angleton Simmons is no longer injured and is sent on a rehab assignment. Jose Urquidy is out for three to four months. Lovely. I call up Cody Bolton. These are my new pitching assignments. We reach May having sucked pig anus with a 9 and 23 record, a 281 win percentage, obviously last in the division. I knew making all these trades was going to hurt in the immediate, but I didn't think this badly. These are my pitching stats as well as my batting stats. 
Not yet learning my lesson, I make a trade with the Giants. Set in Chris Davinsky, Griffin Canning, and a minor leaguer for Michael Waka and Mike Yastrzemski, retaining 70%. I actually like both of these players for a team that's not competing. They can fill some holes. I regret to tell you that YouTube will not allow me to play my next cutaway gag. It was my idea to have a porn star say something along the lines of fill all my holes to fit with this. I researched this. I saw all sorts of videos of holes being filled. One lady wasn't even satisfied with that. She had to have a vibrator. Apparently she wasn't stimulated enough. So now this cutaway gag is sad and unfulfilling. To make this trade work, I release Rule 5 pick Josh Lowe and call up Andrelton Simmons. These are my new pitching assignments, as well as my lineup. Nick Madrigal is out for two weeks and I call up Alec Thomas in his place. This is my new lineup. We make it to June having significantly improved to a 24 and 35 record, a 407 win percentage fifth in the division. For perspective, this year's season would basically be finished today in real life. These are my pitching stats, as well as my batting stats. Of course I make a trade, this time with the Reds, who sends Shogo Akiyama retaining 25% for Philip Evans, Avisail Garcia, and a minor leaguer. I only did this because it had been too long since a trade. To make this trade work, I call up Jeff Hartlieb. These are my new pitching assignments, as well as my lineup. Draft time, and we have the number seven pick this time again. The most significant thing about this draft was our number one pick, Nick Storrs, wanted $9 million. Most of her budget is pretty much going to draft picks, so I can certainly afford it. Today I really want to spend all my USD dollars. Nick Madrigal is no longer injured and is sent on a rehab assignment. Shortly after, Robbie Ray is also no longer injured and is also sent on a rehab assignment. When their rehab assignments are up, I demote Cody Bolton and Taylor Jones to make room for them on the roster. These are my new pitching assignments, as well as my lineup. Mid-season goals time and shit-eating Bob has mixed feelings about my job performance. Whatever, Nutter Butter. Drew Carlton is out for 11 to 12 months. Only one Rule 5 pick left. I call up Nate Weeman in his place. These are my new pitching assignments. We make it to July, still struggling with the 37 and 49 record, a 430 win percentage, fifth in the division. I see no hope for us in the immediate future, but I trust the process because it is my process. These are my pitching stats, as well as my batting stats. Of course, another trade, this time with the Dodgers, who send Caleb Ferguson, retaining 95% and two minor leaguers for Jeff Hartlieb and Robbie Ray. And adding to our potential ace list, Caleb Ferguson has absolutely amazing potential as a pitcher. We might have a dynasty soon, but right now, let's dig ourselves out of this dumpster fire. Uh, how are we gonna get out of here? We'll dig our way out. <laughs> no, no, dig up, stupid. To make this trade work, I promote Blake Senderlin to the Major League roster. These are my new pitching assignments, as well as my lineup. I make a trade with the Reds again, sending two minor leaguers for Malik Smith and a minor leaguer. My minor leaguers were garbage, and I kind of like Malik Smith for his speed. To make this trade work, I DFA Roman Quinn. This is my new lineup. I make a trade with the Yankees, sending three minor leaguers for Mike Tockman and a minor leaguer. Again, really garbage minor leaguers that I'm sending. To make this trade work, I demote Mike Yastrzemski. Right after that, I make a trade with the Angels, sending Cole Tucker and a minor leaguer for Kevin Padlow and three minor leaguers. I really needed the minor leaguers more than I needed Cole Tucker at the moment. This is my new lineup after both trades. In between those trades, Nick Madrigal was suspended. Don't ask me how that happened. Some errors were made in the recording of this week. I'm not fucking perfect. We make it to August, still doing rather badly with the 46 and 64 record of 418 win percentage, fifth in the division. I feel like we should be doing slightly better than this, but what the hell do I know? These are my pitching stats as well as my batting stats. I make no roster moves at this time. Taking a look at our only remaining Rule 5 pick, DJ Peters, he's not doing terribly well, hitting only for a 231 batting average. However, his OBP is 340, which is pretty good, and has been worth 1.1 wins above replacement. Just goes to show batting averages and everything. As per the usual tradition, we play the game after the trade deadline, and here's the lineup that I went with. This game was extremely close, and we had a chance to tie it up in the bottom of the ninth, but speedster Malik Smith got tagged out at home, which we can't watch because the game sucks, and the Pirates lose to the Cardinals 3-2. Fucking A, man. If I'm going to lose, at least let me watch me lose. Boy, I'm getting too old for this shit. Shortly after, Kiebert Ruiz is out for three to four weeks, and I call up Dalton Varsho in his place. This is my new lineup. Jose Urquidy is no longer injured and is sent on a rehab assignment. Cabrian Hayes is out for five to six weeks and I call up Taylor Jones in his place. This is my new lineup. Kiebert Ruiz is no longer injured and is sent on a rehab assignment. 
We make it to September, all playoff hopes dashed with a 61-78 record, a 439 win percentage, fourth in a division. At least we should get a decent draft seed next year, right? These are my pitching stats, as well as my batting stats. For roster expansion, and yes, it actually is an expansion this time, I call up Jose Urquidy and Kiebert Ruiz from the rehab assignments. These are my new pitching assignments, as well as my lineup. Cabrian Hayes is no longer injured, and I decide to say fuck off and send him on a rehab assignment. We end the season with a 76 and 86 record, a 469 win percentage, fourth in the division. We really put up a valiant effort at the end there, which makes me think I'm on the right track. These are my pitching stats to end the season, as well as my batting stats. Taking a look at my favorite player of the season, Adam Frazier did reasonably well hitting for a 280 average, 358 OBP, and was worth 0.9 wins above replacement. I mean, the fact that this guy was my favorite player of the bunch says a lot to the state of this team. I mean, this is how low the bar is already, and this guy just stepped right over it, unlike Hermes, who evidently decided to take the much more difficult route of under the bar. Some people, man. As far as who won the World Series, the Dodgers beat the Mariners in six. I don't know what part is more surprising, the Dodgers winning or the Mariners even being there. To end the season, the owner is very happy with me. I may have had to buy him a hooker to make that happen, but he's very happy. By which I of course meant purchase the services of a sex worker. Sorry, I'm still getting used to that. However, just to add a gut punch to me, our fan loyalty dropped, which again affects our budget. Wow, and I thought that the Orioles challenge was really hard, but I didn't even get a full season to work with this time. I really think I have my work cut out for me here. But what do you think? Be sure to like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe! Maybe you stop by my Discord while you're at it. Maybe I start an OnlyFans, take off my clothes for you for $20 a month. What do you think about that? Too much, too much. I'm out.